among modern french painters during the nineteenth century jean-paul laurent who was born in eighteen thirty eight would become one of the dominant painters in france along with his two sons our story begins with the talented young jean-paul laurent from his boyhood village of forcavo in southern france he was thirteen years old when a decorative painter who travelled the languedoc country and perched on a cart drawn by a mule came to our town of forcavo to restore the paintings of the parish church to his modish appearance which was brightened up by a strong italian stammer this man possessed a formidable resounding speech what's more his name was antonio the two companions who accompanied him and who served as his apprentices were more colorfully called giovanni known as the redhead and the other filippo known as the black working independently throughout the provinces the young jean paul was admitted into the confidence of the italian painters realizing his enthusiasm to learn a craft they sought to help him it was the thrill of working closely with a potential livelihood in view that to jean paul answered the calling for which he would rise to the top of french art traveling to a tavern called cheval blanc we sometimes ate a sort of red wine stew but we more often gorged ourselves on mad cows in the company of famished people brutes traveling singers and roaming chimney sweeps in the beginning the teenager jean paul took it quite well even echoing the italian's gestures and clowning about but he exercised his own promising devotion to art and escaped the trio while learning of their plot to do him harm so at the moment when his warmth began to suffer from lower class persons with little money he makes his way to toulouse jean paul enters the toulouse school of arts there he became a pupil of monsieur villemson and began to work with the director which could prepare students for the paris schools in the flock of students he was responsible for instructing he quickly discovered in jean paul a talent of the first order then he became more interested in him outside of his school hours he brought him into his studio gave him his first real painting lessons and finally welcomed him into his home madame willem sens an intelligent and fine parisian was in turn interested in the teenager who without fortune by the sheer force of his will claimed to live his dream she unraveled what was happening in his innermost soul and as he almost completely lacked education she became his tutor thus jean paul laurent had found his intellectual family so madeleine and albert had welcomed him fraternally it was in this house that he experienced his first delight as an artist with appreciable talent furthermore his progress was rapid but the dream of art that he was trying to realize did not prevent him from thinking about the realities of life and they were terrible those dreadful realities the sacrifices that his uncle and his father imposed on themselves became heavier every day on their purses to manage and supplement his future at one point jean paul was beginning to despair when monsieur biscarlet a color paint merchant of rue saint rome ordered from him for the sum of twenty francs a copy of job on the dunghill listening to the reproaches of his wife finally he was earning a living for forty francs per month marianne parmentier who ran the cheval blanc inn at rue ninot agreed on the recommendation of the generous gaspard orte to provide him with food and board it was time to move on and report to the school of arts which had chosen him as laureate an appointment for which jean paul laurent had enabled him to leave for paris where he also found employment with the publishing firm of braun clement et Cie for three years and assured him the sum of fifteen hundred francs to enable him to achieve glory without too much worry finally paris jean paul laurent arrived there in the fall of eighteen sixty he immediately entered leon coignet's atelier he also received lessons from alexandre bida an artist from toulouse and specialized in orientalism and studied under eugene delacroix but with an artist's eye for precision and technical perfection he soon developed his own style much to the liking of jean paul the painter settled in the middle of the 14th arrondissement rue de l'ouest 
the location is the district that has traditionally been home to many artists as well as a breton community favored by plein air painters where colorfully attired models were to be found there he found a numerous and noisy company of painters but the young toulousain although enthusiastic did not allow himself to be seduced by this easy life he worked very hard and read voraciously finally by 1863 he prepared to make his first submission to the salon in the history of modern 19th century painting this date sounds like a sudden clarion call and reeks a little like gunpowder why because it is the year of the famous salon des refusés but jean paul although he was interested in this movement from which a new type of painting was to emerge did not believe he had to submit his intelligence and his ambitions to the laws of a rebellious profession or ideology alone an artist he wanted to remain a thorough professional and put his talent to the test of what he believed to be the truth besides since his arrival in paris he had not spent a week without going to the louvre his real enthusiasm as a young artist went to the spaniards and the venetians who were so rich in color on the other hand his ambitions were toward furthering that vein of true impressionism as practiced by such painters as velasquez he had not worked so diligently to reach paris to simply experiment and cause waves in the social circles of parisian life but to win the hearts of the art-loving public with a skill that lives on and has proven itself over time jean paul some have observed may be characterized as a sort of artistic son-in-law of delacroix who was forty years his senior but whereas delacroix irritated people by his violence of composition by his arrangement of figures with a view to pathos at the expense of naturalness and the frequent incompleteness of his works which were regarded largely as sketches not truly finished paintings Lorenz, on the other hand was always a finished and accurate painter as of his ambition his art is its own justification finally the following year in 1869 jean paul married madeleine willemsens then his life settled that same year the jury awarded a third medal to his painting he accepted the role of drawing teacher in the schools of the city of paris since his young household which he set up on rue taran immediately took on a new responsibility but his work does not suffer from it the war of 1870 and the paris commune surprises him in the middle of his work he will put his family to safety in the south at toulouse finally when peace returns he only thinks about working always working so he is in full control the strength of his drawing is supported by a color that is both didactic and naturalistic his brilliant science of movement and arrangement is recognized by all each year he asserts himself a little more with first-rate work his numerous works of highly original interpretations of a narrative story and prodigious output are remarkable as one can see by the work shown his skills are limitless and penetrating one is compelled to stop and study the clever use of storytelling with superb composition early in the seventies on the opening day of the salon students were commenting on the pictures when one from the atelier of bonnard said have you seen the robert the pious it is an innovation a short time afterward the picture in question having won the applause of paris was bought by the french government and placed in the luxembourg the fondness of laurent for dramatic subjects may have had its origin in his technical ability as a designer of spaces and their technical boundaries meaning his ability to work minimally to express the greatest effect possible in this connection edwin blashfield the american painter makes an interesting observation that in his canvases laurens admits no false movement his finely drawn and admirably characterized people sit or stand still they live yet do not move probing for the secret of their impressiveness one critic traces it to how laurens observes the first law of composition that of filled and empty spaces he never had to be taught that where certain portions of a picture are rich and crowded other portions must be simple in order that there may be spaces which shall rest the eye jean paul laurent had devoted himself to the most important episodes of a story or to those already very precisely described of a narrative both for his commissioned works 
for his publisher with whom he continued to contribute and his public salon sensations that were a continuance of his skill as a storyteller with powerful dramatic flair and while he remained faithful to the storyline with the use of his narrative imagination jean paul omitted depicting scenes of torture and action often he favored scenes of dying men and funerals whose emotional power was paradoxically much stronger he was concerned about respecting archaeological truth as well and remained faithful to the descriptions of costumes ornamentation and decorations to do this he consulted written works including the history of the franks by gregoire de tours and the primaire or rudiment of archaeology by de calmont he was also inspired by buildings seen during his travels to develop some forty-two drawings on a given project all with brush and pen he made many preliminary sketches in pencil now kept in a private collection most of the compositions can be found there as with his large decorative canvases he also executed a large number of painted studies planned to depict his characters included in the background jean-paul laurence falls into the category of artists who derive their greatest reward from the proud consciousness of relentlessly striving to realize only noble inspirations since his youth he has valued moral independence over any material advantages that fortune could offer he has never been tempted by base considerations of temporary gain to cater to the routine tastes of his contemporaries even now at the pinnacle of his fame his modesty is as remarkable as his indulgence toward the shortcomings of beginners in his art from his early days lawrence has preferred the path of moral independence over material gain consistently avoiding pandering to the routine tastes of his contemporaries for temporary advantages despite attaining the summit of fame his modesty is striking and he generously supports the development of budding talent particularly his regular pupils his sustained and rare interest in their progress demonstrates a commitment to nurturing artistic growth during a recent visit by a writer to jean paul laurent's studio a registered packet arrived bearing russian stamps upon opening it a photograph of tolstoy was discovered accompanied by a eulogistic dedication from the russian philosopher to the french artist the recipient's gratification upon examining the portrait was significant despite his modesty it was evident that he recognized this as the instinctive homage of one peer to another both the aristocratic philosopher and the humbly born painter belong to the same lineage of genius having pursued different paths to the same end the empowerment of the human intellect in the unfolding narrative of jean paul laurent's life two remarkably gifted sons enter the scene recalling his own industrious youth brings joy to jean paul laurent as he takes pride in beholding the creations of his eldest son paul albert laurent and the artistic endeavors of his younger brother jean pierre this artistic journey unfolds like the pages of a perfect novel where the conclusion merely marks the inception of another chapter the torch of his legacy is passed on to his sons who seamlessly assume the responsibilities of his atelier aiding numerous students in their artistic pursuits during his later years the tales of his sons as captivating as their fathers are yet to be unveiled in future presentations adding another layer to this rich artistic legacy as we have endeavored to display the remarkable career of jean paul laurent it is truly hoped that more of his work will become available to the art loving public he has been a popular artist and instructor to many painters and his legacy lives on we hope you enjoyed his story and we look forward to bringing out more highly gifted artists in future presentations thank you to our subscribers and do leave a like as it helps the channel so till next time it's bye for now.